relations and especially welcome that I've had now for nine years. Who are some of your clients? R. Kelly, uh, Sunshine, Shaquille O'Neal, WGCI. Uh, oh, I'm here lost. Oh, uh, Mid Midwest Radio and Music Conference, uh, like, which is Jimmy Simmons' conference. Uh, George's Music Room, George Davis. Uh, some others I can't even remember. So many. But I'm, but I'm thankful. I'm very thankful. And uh, as a publicist, uh, what actually do you do? A lot of people may not know what a publicist is. Well, a publicist is uh, the media person, and um, to, to just to tell you really briefly, it's the person that, that, that uh, gets the word that uh, promotes something, as in whether it be newspaper or magazine or television or any vehicle that we that we think that we can be creative with to get the word out on whatever it is, whatever the product is. And your role today at the seminar with uh, with WGCI. Yeah, is to do just that. Um, we did all the media and public um, publicity for WGCI. Uh, GCI has been a client of mine for seven years, I'm very happy to say. And uh, we work very closely with them with all of their special events. We did all of the media, all the publicity, the press for GCI. And they're just great to work with. And aside from the fact that they're the number one station, um, that's good business for us, you know. So we, we're very happy about it. Great. Well, I'd like to thank you for your thank time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. You got me to do something I don't do. <laughs> Got you, and you gave me some um, advice, and it's really worked. I've been working with uh, Stuart and kind of. Um, <laughs> any kind of, of a vocalizer or I mean a harmonizer or you know what are you doing with compression just can you walk me through that okay um, laying, laying down any harmony we'll take Janet as a good example because she has really nice harmonies that's kind of you know the, the base of a lot of her music is right. the harmony price right. um, first of all we get in there and I never know what I'm going to do I'm just crazy that way I just go in there and just start doing it we try to take inspiration but on um, an artist like Janet, a lot of her harmony parts are built keyboard-wise. They're built on the notes in the chord and what works in the chord. Uh, a lot of times, our ear can't hear a lot of the notes in the chord. And Big Jim could testify to that because well, we always go through, if, if I get stuck on something, I say, Big Jim, what's the chord? So he'll go to the piano and play the chord and then we'll find a crazy note in there that it would be very hard for you to sing if you didn't have it. And a lot of people can't sing, well, Daddy knows that too. You, you go to that, that note and you say, okay, well, I can't sing that. Well, we'll turn everything else off right. and let them sing that note. Okay, okay. And then we'll put stuff around that. Okay. Um, compression, you know, we use that on pretty much all the vocals, unless they're just soft vocals. Because, like I say, when people go from a whisper to a roar, you got to be able to contain it. Um, but harmony is based on chords. There's different inversions of the chords. Right. I don't know, you want to expound on that any then? Yeah, yeah it's, it's based on the, uh, whatever the chord is that you're playing. If it's an A minor 7, will you sing notes from the A minor 7 chord? Hey, why don't you give an example? Of it? Okay. Give it, do the thing. Play that thing. The gym, y'all. Go through this thing. That's why we got the keyboard over here. Bless it. All right. If the chord is an A minor 7, then you're just going to sing notes from the chord. Okay. That's basically what it is. You're just singing notes out of the chord. Alright? Whatever that chord is, uh, that's a... Uh, uh, D6. Okay. All right. And you just pick notes out of the chord, and like Terry said, whatever the inversion is, you can you can sing notes higher from the chord. Uh, are there any you know lock, lock, right. lock. tricks in terms of inversions that you use? Like, do you always try a certain type of inversion? Or well, it's kind of based on it's it's block harmony, like Terry said, and it kind of works better in my opinion. If the melody is up here, then you do the chord, you do your inversions down here to, okay. to support the melody. Okay. You know, opposed to doing 
the melody up there, doing the uh, chords up there where the melody is, then you got like a bunch of notes, you know, in the same register. Okay. You know what okay. I'm saying? So that's kind of the gist of it. Okay, what about to make it sound tight? Like... <laughs> Performance. <laughs> okay. People, people hey. gotta do something. <laughs> Keyboard can't do everything. <laughs> yeah, you gotta we gotta stand that line, brother. I know. He said raise your hands if you got something on top of that question. Okay, you gotta oh, go ahead. Um how many times would you stack stack a harmony? Till the sound's good. Till the sound is good. <laughs> like, <laughs> is there a general rule? No, there's no there's no rules at all. We break every rule. They told us we should record in a red. Hell, the red light's on all the time. <laughs> I'd rather life on the red light come on. <laughs> it's all right with me. So, I mean, there's no rules. I mean, the rules is what you make it. What sounds good to you? I mean, if you listen to old Sly Stone records where Sly sounds like this, and you go up on the mic, that was, but his record sound good. You like that. Because that's it gives you a different feel. It's a whole nother thing. So break some rules sometime. It's okay. What about dissonance? Dissonance is good if people like it. You know, <laughs> it, it all depends on the hit. You know what I'm saying? I don't, it, there's no rule. A, a lot of times, I I can't play keyboards too good. But I would I play, and I'll be like, okay, because I can't move my hands too far. Cause I was like, if I move, boy, I messed up. I had to come back count notes. So I developed a little thing where I play where I always held down like one note. My finger would stay on that one note. And Jimmy would always say, man, that's wrong. I said, it sounds right to me. What's wrong with it? He said, no, it's wrong, but it's cool. <laughs> okay? Cause that's my way of doing it. It's, it's okay. And that became like one of our signature things, the way we do things. Right. The note doesn't move. It's one note in there pretty much that just... Da, da, da. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Okay. All right. Is that a good thing to do? I mean, of course, just kind of um, uh, beef up the tape, you know, so for the stops and things that I did on that, and then just send that through, or should I work with um, just a musician, or how... Should it be part of the way completed, or exactly how should that go in terms of the initial copywriting process of your song? Well, just a quick way. I, I think, you know, just like you would want to send in a good letter, if you wanted to do something, you want to send a very clean letter to a, a company or firm in, in, with your business practice, the same way with a copyright. You don't necessarily have to do a full production out on a song to get it copywritten. But if you could find a, a, a person to play the song for you and you just sing it, make sure you sing it with, send it in with a tape and a lyric sheet. It's really as simple as that. It doesn't have to be full out. It doesn't even necessarily have to be scored to sheet music. You could just have a vocal and piano with your lyric sheets and, and put a date on when you figure you kind of think you wrote this song. And eventually, once you send it in, actually, once you send it in, it's stamped via mail and it's already really copywritten, but you will eventually get a certificate back from the copyright office. It might be three weeks, it might be six weeks, it might be four months based on their workload, but it will, will come back to you. Uh, folks like Jill Scott and you know, Erica Badu and, and yeah. India Ari, because they have filled a gap in the R&B world, I believe that there's going to be a surge of poets, anointed poets, in the gospel area. And we will find in a few more years that it will become more popular to be an anointed speaker as opposed to a preacher because somebody will come to a concert where you're speaking and talking about the love of God rather than, rather than somebody preaching and hammering down stuff. Because we have to be, the Bible tells us that we have to be as wise serpents but harmless as doves. And God is anointing all of us in this room for that wisdom but also for that humility. And what God is doing in your life, you know, I see that spark in your eye about what you're doing. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, that's that's so I cool. Yeah, that's and what I'm saying. I want to be a vessel of God. Yeah. I, I mean, you can tell. I can tell, way, you know, from way up here that you want to do that. So there, there are different ways that you can go about doing that. But in everything, ask God for his direction. Of course, we know that. But uh, if you can... Uh, go into the studio and just get a demo of yourself, you know, with some real fly tracks and you, you uh, speak on the end of those, uh, well, I mean, speak during during that whole thing. It's I really believe that that's another place where God has 
gospel music going. And that's just, you know, I'm getting all excited and goosebumpy about it. But I really believe that that will be one of the greatest tools in bringing folks to Christ. Because, you know, you put the little dun, 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 you know, and you have that in the background. What would you do if you dun, 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 you know, go on, just go. No, but I'm feeling that thing right now.